Uh, yeah. <laughs> he is the blitzer. Okay. All right. Um, okay, let's go through our practice bit here. Um, okay, what we talked about on Friday, converting. Um, I'll zoom in on this here in a minute so it's bigger. Uh, the conversion formula will be on the board. It will probably be right on this little blank space off to the side here. That's pi over 180. If you're going one direction, you flip it over, you're going the other way. Um, these, this requires a nice, easy fraction. You simplify the fraction. These require decimals because you're going back to degrees. The ones at the bottom, you're asked for coterminal. Remember, on that bottom question, that's what, five and six? You have to give me two of them, two coterminals. That's where you add 360 or subtract 360. You can do it as many times as you want, either adding or subtracting, but I usually go one or, one or the other. Okay? You should put on the board that a coterminal is plus or minus 360. No. All right. No. 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 All right. Number seven and eight. The formula is already printed on the test. That formula will not be on the board. Okay, the S equals R theta. It's already on your practice guide. It'll be there on the test day. I'll make sure of it. The thing you have to remember, your angle theta needs to be in radians. So you have to convert it. Then the, then the radius is R, and then the S is your arc length. You should probably put that okay. on the side there. Angle has to be in radians. Okay. Shh. All right. Nine. Yeah. Nine. Nine, we talked about this one Friday. The first answer is cosine, the second answer is sine. Uh, then you have to find all the six trig functions, the remaining, I guess the remaining four. Uh, you have to find those. Uh, two of them should be easy, the other two you have to set up a triangle, we talked about that Friday. Then number 10, 11, these we have to do the co-functions. The co-function pairings will be on the board. So like sine will be paired with cosine and cosecant with secant and tangent and cotangent. I'll have them paired and you always have to use a complementary angle. I believe that clue will still be on there on the test. You have to use complementary. Okay, remember, on 10 and 11, you are not typing them in your calculator. You're not. The only time you'd probably need to is if you're converting an angle or if you've got to figure out what 90 minus what that angle is given to you. Maybe that's the only thing you need to actually type in. I want the one with the fraction. Okay, yeah. Uh, 12 and 13, let's start here. Um, I'm going to try to give you a little bit of time today to actually type these in to make sure you're getting correct answers. That's why I give you two of these so you can type them in and you can see. All right, let's start with the first one. So if you have a calculator out in front of you, make sure it's on, it's working. Okay, um, I'll do either one of these that you want. It really doesn't matter to me. Um, but I, I want to make sure that we're getting the right answers here. So what I mean by this, we have to find the angle in terms of degrees, not radians. So you got to make sure you're calculus in degree mode. So on test day, I will walk around, so that'll be Thursday, I will walk around just to make sure everyone's calculus in degree mode. It'll be weird, I'm just going to walk around, grab your calculator, see what you're in, put it down. It's not a big deal, don't think I'm checking on you personally, it's just I'm checking every calculator just to make sure you're not getting wrong answers. Okay? Now. When, when you start this problem, you have to take the inverse button second. for cosine, which is the second key up, and when you type this in, you have to hit the second key, which is that weird colored key in the upper left corner of your calculator. Then you hit the cosine button, and what it should put on your screen is it should display this. Cosine little negative one with a, probably a parenthesis behind it. Now, if you do not have a menu-driven calculator, like Mr. Ha here, <laughs> hey, you will have to you will have to type in the decimal first, then hit shift only cosine. Okay. All right. Now, for everyone else, since you guys hit second or shift cosine, and you have this on your screen, then you can just type in the decimal that they gave you. And when you hit enter or equal sign, twenty-eight point seven. Twenty-eight point seven degrees. What? No, we rounded to the nearest degree. Yeah, what's nearest degree? So if you go twenty-eight point seven, maybe twenty-nine degrees, somewhere in that range. Either one, I'll be fine. If you even give me two decimal places, I'll probably be fine. I might change that nine. direction. No, uh, I might change so. the direction to go to maybe tenths or hundredths. If that direction is changed, I'll clearly warn you on test day. Like, hey. Uh, number 12 and 13, I'll make sure we're going through the review. I'll be like, give me two decimal places on this one. And I'll, it'll be right on the top two decimal places or whatever. But just kind of, so this one was nearest three, so I'd probably put 29. Is, it, is it wrong okay. if you put nine decimal places? I don't want nine. All right. Can you do it? You could do it. It's just I don't want it. All right. Now, 13. On 13, now you're doing the tangent. Same exact idea, but now you're doing shift or second tangent and it will give you the second tangent key, the inverse tangent, tangent negative one key, okay? Did, is there anyone in this room that is struggling to get this answer like the way that we did the first one, number 12? 
is anyone like struggle on the cut there like it's not showing up but it's like not the answer that can, or you don't know how to type that in again you only do this when you want to find angles are we good yes okay um, those should be easy like that's a lot like the first page it's just checking like do you know how to type in your calculator correctly um, are you getting are you comfortable with the calculator itself remember on test day I do not answer those types of questions like hey Ward I've been using my calculator for the last couple days I'm using yours how do you type it in I, on, I do not tell you that that's an inappropriate question on test day okay, so you can ask today you can ask tomorrow or after school or before school but not during testing Especially like after the test is over and like somebody is coming in like Thursday night, like, hey Ward, I got a couple questions about the test. Yeah, that's not the right time to ask questions. Keep that in mind. Okay? All right, moving on. I was going to do that. All right, we're going to 14 and 15. Uh, it doesn't matter which one you want to do, I'll just pick one of these here. 14. Uh, 14? Okay. All right, we're going to find. One of the missing pieces. Now the picture will be provided. I always make sure the picture is there for you on these. Um, you have to find the variable that's missing, and they usually tell you two decimal places. That's what the book always said for the same instructions. I usually kept it the same. I didn't really um, retype it anything different. Um, I'll just make sure that you know if there's some weird direction where it wants you to like solve for another item, like two items in there. I'll, make, I'll clearly warn you, like, hey, you're finding multiple items on this picture. This one only wants you to find one, the distance across the lake, the pond, whatever you're doing, okay? All right, so on this one, when, when I start this problem, you know, um, let me draw it over here so you can see it a little bit better. Um, we're finding this distance here. The angle they gave us is 40 degrees, and the number on the bottom is 630. The big thing that I want to make sure of is that you are giving me the correct label like yards, feet, you know, if we're finding a wall. If you're finding angles, you're labeling degrees. Because it, it might want the angle instead, so you're doing kind of like what you did on number 12 and 13 up above. Now, this particular problem, oh, when I start this problem, that's the same one, I just want to draw it. Um, I would definitely label my picture just so I know which trig function to pick. So what I mean by that is, like, if this is my problem, this is the opposite wall. This is the adjacent wall to that, that angle. I'm not using hypotenuse. So if I'm thinking about Sokotoa, I'm doing Tan Toa. So yeah, tangent. Because it's the only one that uses O and A, because that's your first letters here and here. That's, that's why I always do Sokotoa, because it's telling me which one to pick, depending on the label on your triangle. I know some people, like you guys don't really struggle with it, but some people do. Uh, they just don't know which one to pick, because they don't label their triangle. So they don't know, okay, what's opposite, what's adjacent, what's hypotenuse. They don't know which one's which. It's where your angle sits. Opposite's always straight across. The adjacent's next to, and the hypotenuse is always the big wall. You should never get that through. Okay, so we're doing tangent on this one. Tangent of 40 degrees is opposite. Shh. Is opposite over adjacent. Opposite is x, adjacent is 630. And then since the number's on the bottom, the trick is on this one, you just multiply it across. If the, if the number's on the bottom, you multiply it across. If the variable's on the bottom, that's where you do the little switcheroo thing. Where when I talk about that, where if the x is on the bottom, you switch the x if it's on the bottom, and the tangent of 40, you just switch those. But since x is on the top, you multiply the 630. This is what you type in my calculator. Like exactly what you see, 630, tangent 40, hit enter, it gives you a crazy number. It'll be in that three digit ballpark. 528.67. Okay, 528. Mm -hmm. Would you like to know how many centimeters that is? 50 yards. 0.63 yards. Yep. Okay, all right, now. Now. Okay, now. If, if, if the number doesn't turn out to be reasonable, it could have been some something to do with maybe you pick the wrong trig function, maybe maybe you just typed the number in wrong. Double check it again. Type it in your calculator one more time. Uh, but maybe maybe just in that particular case, maybe the angle is so big or so small that it justifies like a crazy answer. Compared to what we have, these seem pretty reasonable. They're pretty close together. Um, uh, just make sure that you are comfortable with how to type that in. Now, Dalton, I know that you have a different calculator. You have to type in backwards. The Casio. Compared to, my, compared to mine. Uh, is anyone struggling with how to type that in? No. 
Okay, good. Now again, remember, I only have 10 calculators. I want to make sure that you know how to type it in yours. That's like 483,000 millimeters. Okay. I don't know why you'd want to. Can I convert them all into miles? Convert it into light. Hey, I'll let you know. If you don't use the same label as me, I will count it. But it would still be all right. Hey, but I'm not going to check it. And I will count how about this? this? How about this? How about this? Hey. Then, what do you use? Hey, I'm not arguing. I, you've already been. I have a question. But it would be you correct. Mr. Ward, I have a so question. You my answer wrong. Mr. Ward, I have a question. question. What if we put the actual and then we just put additional conversions because we enjoy to convert? That's fine. You can do that. <laughs> If you don't, if you don't put the answer I'm looking for, I do count it wrong. So we can put every possible conversion we can hey, think of. You've been warned. I'm not even going to argue. Just let me ask you a question. Nope. So what I'm you're saying is, if I get the answer right, you're going to count it wrong. Just you. <laughs> Wait, so, so I can do it. All right. <laughs> There's been a misclarification. Okay. All right. Uh, we're doing number 16. This is my last problem of the day. Um, 16. 16 and 17, they're kind of like number, can I borrow your practice kit here? Uh, they're a lot like number, is it seven, uh, I heard? Like yeah. seven and eight, I think. I think it's like one and two, actually. It's a lot like number, it's a lot like number nine. Number nine. Um, here's the reason. There's, there's a lot of steps to do here. You have to draw the triangle in the right quadrant. You have to label the, the walls of the triangle, then do Pythagorean theorem to find the missing wall. Uh, make sure the negative signs are filled in correctly, and then find every remaining trig function. These problems, 16 and 17, are worth, I think, 7 points each. It's a lot. It's worth more than some of the others combined. Um, the, like, you would not want to skip problem number 9. You do not want to skip these two. Um, the reason being is that there's just so many parts that you have to figure it out. Okay, I'm gonna do number 16 for you today. 17, we'll, we'll talk about tomorrow, we'll kind of go on from there. Uh, but on this one, like this one's the easier one today, so I'm gonna start with this one, we'll do this one tomorrow. Uh, but the quadrant three, so I can draw kind of a mock picture where it's at. In quadrant three, you always bring the angle, this is my angle, this is my theta, you always bring it back to the x-axis. That's why when I'm in quadrant three, this is quadrant three, the triangle always goes back to make the right angle at the x-axis. That's called the reference angle. You always go back. You don't bring it to the y-axis. Don't do that. It's always don't the x. x. Now, cosine. Cosine stands for adjacent over hypotenuse. So when I label my triangle from this angle theta, this is the adjacent wall. This is the hypotenuse wall. The hypotenuse should always be the positive the number on those wall. triangles. The hypotenuse will never be negative. If the negative sign was on the wrong side of the fraction, you can move it because it doesn't matter where the negative sign goes on a fraction. So if you need to move that negative sign around to make sure that the numbers make sense, that's fine. Then you're going to have to do Pythagorean theorem to find this missing wall. I can already tell you it's a four. It's a it's Mr. a four. negative. Whoa. Pythagorean triple. Whoa. Um, but anyways, three squared plus x squared equals five squared. You do the Pythagorean theorem, and you eventually get that this is 16, and yes, your answer is plus or minus 4. Now, it's plus or minus 4. This answer on this particular problem is negative 4. Now, the reason being, you're in the third quadrant, numbers going down is negative. So that's why this is a negative 4 thing here. But again, you have to do the Pythagorean theorem to make sure that you're getting the right number. Questions on how I found that? No. Again, when you do Pythagorean theorem, these are the legs, that's the hypotenuse, so you should know which one's which. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Okay, so now that I have all the numbers plugged in, no, now I can find all down. the remaining trig functions. So the remaining ones, uh, even though we have cosine to begin with, we can find secant right away. You can find sine and its reciprocal cosecant and tangent and it's reciprocal cotangent. Now, those pairings of which ones are reciprocal will be on the board. They'll be kind of somewhere near the co-functions. They'll be probably in this range over wow. here. I'll have them all kind of clearly labeled. How do we know, like, whether we do the cosine and the co-function versus reciprocals? Yeah. Uh, these are always reciprocals. The only, the only question you do co-functions is that one problem that says it asks for co-functions. Uh, otherwise, they're always for really just don't give up. So <laughs> that's, that's the only one that you do that on. Yeah. All right. 
Now, shh, okay, for cosine, this is negative 3 over 5. That means the, the secant is 5 over negative 3. Then sine is the opposite over hypotenuse. This is the opposite wall. This is the hypotenuse wall. So that's negative 4 over 5. Hey, let's stop talking. And then tangent is opposite over adjacent, so it's negative 4 over negative 3. And that's why when you're in the third quadrant, tangent is positive, because uh, the two negative signs would cancel. The big thing I am checking for, you have the numbers in the right locations, and the signs. And the signs, are they correct? So like, I am looking for, do you have tangent as positive? Because it is positive, you're in that third quadrant. Four, negative 4 over negative 3 is positive. Then you flip it over, cotangent. That's one thing that I know I can catch people on, is that they're going to put the negative signs in all random spots and you miss points automatically. It depends on how many trick functions you got wrong. So, you know, like if you miss the main two, that's two points off. If you miss, you know, four of them, it depends on how bad it was. Were the numbers wrong or just negative signs? If the negative signs are wrong, you count, you know, a point per pair. Per pair. Oh my. So, that is a lot. Yeah, it's worth seven. I mean, there's, there's six points right there for the trig functions, and then there's a point for getting the triangle right, drawn. So what, I have a question. What if you miraculously count the hypotenuse wrong, but set up all the trig functions correctly? So then you get the, the trig function right, you just have the picture wrong. Okay. So what if you don't draw the picture, but you get all of them right? You should have the picture drawn, because that's one of the requirements. But you have to draw the actual picture. You have to draw the pictures, because you have to know where they're at, and you have to do the theorem. Like, there's too, much, there's too much There's too much there to figure out on your own. You have to draw the picture and figure it out. Baloney. Okay. All right, we good? All right, we're done for the day. What's the answer tomorrow?